today, the demand for individuals with cloud computing skills has increased immensely, and recruiters are looking to hire individuals with cloud computing skills and the knowledge and also offer them a good salary. Hey guys, Elias is here. Welcome back and thank you all for your continued support. Today, I will share with you some of the top cloud computing careers to jumpstart the year. Whether you're freshly graduated from college or with a lot of experience already in IT, you must be wondering about the various cloud computing job roles. Well, by the end of this watch, you will be equipped with more than that. I also have a bonus for you, so stick around to find out. First of all, I don't predict. This is not a prediction. This is a rather a study of market dynamics and, and trends evolution. Did you know, for example, that at least 80% of companies worldwide report unimaginable improvements in their IT department since adopting the cloud? Depending on the role, you might already have all the required expertise like networking, like containerization, infrastructure as code, programming languages, serverless, containers, did I say that? Yes, among others. Now, the median salary within this field was more than $146,000 in 2018, a significant increase from the median $124,300 just two years earlier. And during the same period, there were more than 50,000 cloud-based job openings with no signs of slowing down. Now, there is a myth there's a myth that being an expert in the cloud, you can only work for FANG companies, the Amazons and the Googles of the world. And I hate to break it to you because working for the four main cloud vendors, uh, uh, AWS, GCP, Azure, and Alibaba is actually one small piece of the puzzle. There are consulting giants, the Deloitte and KPMG and Accenture of the world, who are constantly hiring cloud computing experts due to the rising demand. Startups, these are looking to move from ideation to market as quickly as possible and thus are looking for cloud experts for guidance. Don't include established companies as well. You know, uh, statistics say that as of 2020, six out of 10 businesses moved their work to the cloud and 70% of those plan to increase their budget in the future as they reported better financials on costs. So without further ado, let's look at some of the best cloud computing careers today. And let's start with cloud architecture. A cloud architect is someone who develops, uh, maintains, implements cloud setups and their focus is on perfecting cloud architecture. So they spend their time ensuring reliability, security, and scalability, while also concentrating on the system's performance. Cloud architects are often responsible for bridging, you know, that gap between complicated business challenges and cloud solutions, which is something I've mentioned also in my video about non-functional requirements. For organizations, cloud computing architecture enables the reduction or even the elimination of their reliance on premise server, on premise storage, on premise networking infrastructure. So organizations adopting cloud architecture often shift IT resources to the public cloud. And if you are thinking of becoming a cloud architect, you will ideally already have a strong background in cloud computing or a similar technical area. If you feel comfortable with most of the following concepts, or at least some of them, then you are probably on the right track. Otherwise, I would recommend some initial study or work in these areas before you tackle the cloud architect role. Good knowledge of at least one operating system, Linux, Unix, Solaris, Ubuntu, Windows. Good understanding of networking, TCP IP, IP addresses, HTTP, DNS. I suggest that you have some familiarity also with these concepts before pursuing a role as a cloud architect. I suggest you also familiar with at least one computer programming language. Although, as you might have noticed in the video with Tony, he mentioned clearly that you don't actually need to have a developer's background in order to become a solutions architect. But a solutions architect and a cloud architect, there's a little bit of difference there, right? So you'll need at least a minimal understanding of a programming or scripting language. This is probably, again, not a must, but it will definitely help you. Security in the cloud is essential, and consequently, a high-level understanding of key security concepts is a must for a cloud architect. So 
Initial knowledge of some basic security concepts such as firewalls. You don't have to be the experts in security, but you need to be knowledgeable of the common attack vectors, common problems of web applications, if that's what you're building, for example, and deploying on the cloud, and how to protect these applications against them. As of January 2022, the average annual pay for a cloud architect in the United States was around $153,000 a year. Not bad at all, isn't it? The second career field you can pursue is cloud security. Cloud security, also known as cloud computing security. This is a collection of security measures designed to protect cloud-based infrastructure applications, right? And also data. These measures ensure user and device authentication, data and resource access control, data privacy protection. They also support regulatory data compliance. So cloud security is employed in cloud environments to protect a company's data from distributed denial of service or DDoS attacks from malwares, hackers, and unauthorized user access or use. Most companies hiring a cloud security specialist are looking for someone with a bachelor degree in computer science, programming, information security, or a related field. Your formal education can be supplemented with IT certifications as well, with on-the-job experience, familiarity with languages also like Python, and knowledge of DevOps tools go a long way. Now, a cloud security specialist will likely partner with cloud engineers and cloud architects to deliver complete cloud security solutions. Cloud security specialists are also tasked with monitoring and detecting malicious activity once a system is deployed. As of January 2022, the average annual pay for a cloud security specialist in the United States is around $96,000 a year. I reached out to a friend and a colleague of mine working currently as a senior cloud security specialist and asked him to give us a little bit more details about the job. Here are some of the core responsibilities and capabilities of cloud security architect. First, to improve and maintain a clean cloud security posture and to secure production workloads, most importantly, the data. Second, to promote and implement a culture of security and privacy by design. Third, to propose and enforce implementation of security controls at every layer of architecture towards achieving the defense in depth strategy. Fourth, drafting security standards and controls and encouraging the teams to follow them to adopt a shared security responsibility model with shift left mindset. And fifth, to conduct regular and on-demand threat modeling activities to identify and plan for fixing design flaws. And finally, developing and improving strong IAM policies, principles, and practices. Hope this gives you a glimpse into the life of a cloud security architect. Cheers. The Internet of Things, or IoT, refers to the interconnection of everyday objects or tools that we usually use with the Internet. See, the incorporation of microprocessors and sensors to objects plus the automatic connection to the network have allowed the collection and transfer of data and the automation of many processes without requiring user interaction. Some examples of these concepts are wearables which can measure temperature, heart rates, and also smart homes, which allow us to self-regulate or control lights, thermostats or appliances from you know, a smartphone or a home voice assistant. Now, IoT specialists are in charge of applying Internet of Things strategies to everyday objects and fostering new functionalities and uses within this context of greater hyper-connectivity. To carry out their work, they must know multiple technologies that refer to microcontroller programming, cheaper sensors, standardization of cloud-based platforms, data analysis, machine learning, or cybersecurity issues, among others. The primary task of an IoT specialist or engineer is the creation and development of devices, of sensors, and software that allows a device to connect seamlessly with other systems. They research, they create, test and document IoT solutions with integrated systems and devices. Now, a crucial skill that an IoT engineer must possess, in my opinion, is an in-depth understanding of computer programming and 
network security, both these two. They must also have a knowledge of sensors, machine learning and AI and must have experience in working with front-end and back-end system as well as custom-built firmware and hardware. During my humble experience building home automation systems using Arduino and ASP variations, I know that being well-versed in a programming language like C++ or embedded C or embedded C++ helps a lot. Although there are layers, right? There's a lot of interfaces allowing you to control an Arduino using a Python code, for example, or even JavaScript. Now, the salary of an IoT engineer may vary depending on several factors, such as the job they have uh, and the industry they are in. You know, someone starting out can earn up to $110,000 a year, whereas an engineer with a bit of experience and additional skills can earn up to $130,000 a year. An engineer in a more senior position can earn up to $145,000 a year. Those are numbers that I found by doing my research, but numbers will slightly vary depending on your geographical region and other factors. It's also worth to mention that AWS has taken this big lead in supporting IoT around the world. The amount of services that AWS deploys and maintains for IoT devices is just innumerable and it just keeps growing every year. So keep that in mind. And we get to the number four of this list, data engineering. And this is the practice of designing and building systems for collecting, for storing and analyzing data at scale. It is a broad field with uh, applications in just about every industry. Organizations have the ability to collect massive amounts of data nowadays, and they need the right people and technology to ensure the data is in a highly usable state by the time it reaches the data scientist and analyst. In addition to making the lives of data scientists easier, working as a data engineer can give you the opportunity to make a tangible difference in a world where we'll be producing 463 exabytes per day by 2025. I can't even get my head around that. That's one and 18 zeros of bytes worth of data. Now, fields like machine learning and deep learning can't succeed without data engineers to process and channel that data. And that's why data engineers work in various settings to build systems that collect, that manage and convert raw data into usable information for data scientists and business analysts to interpret. Now, with the right set of skills and knowledge, you can launch or advance a rewarding career in data engineering. Many data engineers have a bachelor's degree in computer science or a related field. And by earning a degree, you know, you can build a foundation of knowledge you'll need in this quickly evolving field. Consider a master's degree for the opportunity to advance your career and unlock potentially higher paying positions. Now, data engineering is also a well-paying career. The average salary in the US is around 110 thousand dollars with some data engineers earning as much as hundred and sixty four thousand dollars per year now compare this with other data roles such as data analysts earning around seventy thousand dollars or database administrator banking around eighty thousand dollars a year and you can see that data engineers are compensated well for their skills and the last career i want to talk about in this video is platform engineering because in this age of digital transformation Companies are continually looking to innovate to gain a competitive advantage. Now, one way to gain a competitive advantage is to have an efficient mechanism to deploying and operating applications in production that enables teams to provide end-user features faster. Now, to achieve that, many companies realize that it helps to have a dedicated team that builds and maintains a common platform and constantly looks to innovate how applications are deployed and operated in production. This practice of creating a common platform as a product is called platform engineering. And so I asked on behalf of you guys, my friend and Google engineer, Abdel, what he thinks about platform engineering as a career. Let's hear him out. So platform engineer is a role that you might have came across. It is a pretty relatively new thing. It didn't exist a couple of years ago, but it is a career that a lot of people pursue. Before we describe what the role is, actually, I think we have to talk about what, what do we mean by platform? So platform, generally speaking, is any set of technologies that you might actually use to deploy an application. So taking a hypothetical example, let's say you have a company that makes burgers, right? Makes and sells burgers without talking about names, a big chain international, hundreds of thousands of customers or hundreds of millions of customers maybe they want to streamline how 
their internal developers build and deploy applications so they will have you know people responsible for building apps so the apps that are either used by external customers to order the products from this company or apps for internal use so these applications need to run somewhere there are several ways you could really organize an IT department but one of the models is to have an internal platform team so basically you have people inside the company which sole responsibility is to take the basic infrastructure components and turn them into something usable by developers so that could be thinking compute storage networking security so these are the base uh, infrastructure stuff and then put them together and then create a managed offering but that offering is only available internally it's not available externally right it's actually created and it's customized for the need of this specific company so if said company uses containers to build their application that internal platform could be a container-based orchestration platform you know open shifts kubernetes stuff like that and then it could have other stuff like managed databases managed queue systems managed login monitoring alerting all these kind of things so that's just kind of like a brief description of what we mean by platform. So platform engineer is typically somebody who works in this company or this kind of companies and who is working on the team, either building or maintaining this platform. And here we kind of, in terms of like skill set, we kind of, we can categorize people in, in, or we can categorize the roles in two main ones. You are either in a build team. So you are mostly, mostly focusing on building the platform itself. So taking different components Maybe you're actually building on top of another existing cloud platform. So you are taking components from that cloud platform, putting them together, doing some automation, authorization, IAM, stuff like that. And then you offer your internal developers a way to deploy their applications. Or you are actually operating this platform. So you are running uh, the platform, you're operating it. So that's that's where we start looking at roles like the, the DevOps, SREs, uh, system administrators, database administrators, and stuff like that. So they're more the OPSI type, type roles. Additional skills for a career in this field include creativity. Yes, we can be creative with machines. Uh, and personal skills, research skills, uh, the ability to program in a larger team environment when necessary as well. And the salaries of platform engineers in the US range from $182,000 to $185,000 with a median salary of around $140,000. But the middle 50% of platform engineers makes between $100,000 and $125,000 with the top 86% making $185,000 plus. So there you have it, the creme de la creme of cloud computing related jobs in 2022. Now amidst the upheavals in the job market in the past pandemic era, if there's one thing that has remained stable is the demand for skilled IT workers. In fact, the IT sector continues to be one of the few bright spots in the hiring world, with the average cloud computing salary reflecting the demand. As I conclude, here are some of the tips for anyone who wants to jumpstart a career in cloud computing. Choose the right cloud computing certification. Build your cloud portfolio. Ensure you have reputable references. Expand your network. Not computer network, but with people, you know, with experts like me. <laughs> did I just say that? <laughs> well, I think I did. Um, so if you have any questions related to my work, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will definitely respond to them. I'll promise you a bonus at the beginning. Now, if you check the video description, you will find links that will take you to a few job opportunities that cover a few of the career choices that we talked about during this video. These job opportunities are for the company that I work with currently, Essence. So click on the links, read the job description, apply, make sure to mention you're coming from the channel. These are completely remote jobs that can be done from anywhere in the world. So who knows, we might end up working together. And that's it for me today. In the coming videos, I will be covering more well-paying careers in IT space, if you wish. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of them. Until next time, stay safe. Peace out.